Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the old masturbator, and this week we actually have we have a guest. Dodo's floating around the the office while I talk, so uh, it's it's like a it's like a Hitchcock. It's gonna be like a mix of bathtub and Hitchcock. Um, we're talking today without any. We don't have any theme music. The whiteboard's in the garage. I'm not gonna carry it up anymore unless someone carries it up for me. We're talking about I, George Simonon. I'm sorry. People are sick of hearing it. I, the basic premise of the show is I just talk about whatever I'm reading. And I read Simonon all the damn time. I've been reading him all my life since I was about 19 or 20. And I read an interview with him in Paris Review, you know, those collections of uh, interviews with writers in the Paris Review. And I read this interview with him, and he sounded fascinating. And for me, you know, I used to, as a kid, I was torturously writing sentences, and I was it would take me weeks to write the first page of a short story. And he would talk blithely talk about how he wrote novels in, you know, eight to ten days. I think it was eight to eleven days he wrote his novels. And then he spent four or five days cutting. And that's it. He wrote an entire novel. So he was a big influence on me. And I started reading him and I've loved him ever since I was uh I was uh about nineteen or twenty. I started off reading these I used to buy these in secondhand shops in America, these omnibuses, the penguin omnibuses from this late 60s early 70s early 70s probably and each omnibus would have three different simonons in them and usually one or two of the called the roman Dur, the hard novels the serious literary novels and then one or two maigres which when i was younger i found kind of boring and now as i'm an old fart i like more and more i just i cannot whenever whatever mood i'm in even when the world's falling apart even through the tr whole trump administration I could, and the, the world's burning down. I can sit and read a Maigret, and I feel feel like I feel okay about the world. Oh, so I, I'm going to talk briefly about what I'm doing, what I've been doing for about six, seven years. I wrote a long piece for the New York Times, which I might link you to, but I've put it up so many times. It, there's a long piece in the New York Times book review about my fondness for Simonon, and I've been reading through the complete Maigrets as they come out from Penguin, and Penguin's been re retranslating all the old Maigres and they're brand new translations and there were some problems with the early translations um, I don't think most of the problems were that serious but there was one notorious translator who used to change names and actually change things around I don't remember exactly I think I remember who it was but I won't say it because it's not worth bringing it up um, the ones I read in the past couple weeks I read them like two days in a row I read one a day Maigre and the Reluctant Witnesses which is again we're getting into the I still think the greatest period of the Simon of the Maigrays and really of all of Simonon's work is pretty much in the fifties. And I think one of the reasons is he was when he started off oh shush don't know. One of the reasons he was uh kind of boring is he wrote a lot of the Maigrays when he was traveling around the world. He was on a he lived on a houseboat and he lived in America and he didn't really write Maigray wasn't in Paris. He was always traveling to places. And and in the, in the 40s and 50s, 50s particularly when Simonon kind of settles more regularly in Paris and spends more time, all the Maigrets are set right in Paris and just through the daily life of this detective in Paris and the people he sees in the streets. The Reluctant Witnesses is about going into this. One of, one of the things that Maigret does quite well is he goes into these houses that nobody's been in probably in decades, and he goes into some famous old some, some old family who they make they make cookies or cookies. They make sweet biscuits. And they're basically an old family who've had money all their lives, who've lost everything. And one of the, one of them gets murdered. She likes to go up in the... I built a little thing up, up there for her. She's up in that daily bump. <laughs> she has some bells. She is. She, uh, so he goes into this house, and the, someone has been murdered. And as he starts to examine, all, meeting all these people, most of whom is like, it's like meeting kind of creatures coming out of a cave. They're like blinking at the lights. And it's this weird family that's been living off basically mar they marry rich women and just take the money and it's a fascinating it's a it's really one of the better ones a really lovely Maigret and really fascinating and the way he gets in, he gets involved with these characters and he really likes one he likes the sister I think it was who actually leaves the family this crazy family she goes off on her own and it's just this is just a really fascinating ex this is the best period to, to try Maigret the other is Maigret's secret and it's Every once in a while, Simonon mixes up the way he tells the stories. So the stories, he has a lot of kind of tri kind of really clever ways of telling the Maigret stories in different ways. And this one is about Maigret remembering a case in which he really, he's, he's ashamed of his involvement in that case. They're both great, 
great reads. It's a floral pattern martini glass. Uh, martini glass. No, it's not the floral pattern. The floral pattern martini glass went the way of the of the dodo. Excuse me, dodo. It was it was broken. I and it's gone. But this is our, our Manhattan, and just like Philip Marley used to drink, only it's not the, got the floral pattern martini glass. And the third book I read over the past few weeks was The Man from London. So Penguin is also retranslating or doing the first translations of a lot of the thrillers of the hard novels, the Roman Durs of, of Simenon. And this is a really old one from the 30s, 19... I got it, my glasses. 34? 1934. So this would be one of the first ones he put. He published under his name. Really excellent. Simenon spent a lot of time around boats. He lived on a houseboat for a long time. And it's about a guy in uh, Dieppe. And he's, he's basically a guy who works, I forget, he works the docks somehow. I don't remember what he does. And he, he sees a guy come in. He sees a murder committed. And he starts to follow them around. And again, it's all character in Simonon. It's not Hitchcocky in suspense. It's just this one guy who's been a loser all his life. He's got a bad marriage. Um, his daughter's poor. They're, all, they're not living very well. And he has all this money thrown into his lap. And how does he deal with it? You know, just three great reads. I just love them. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about a bit is that uh, my longtime life with uh, reading Maigret and Simenon is that I never know where the hell to put the books. You see this. I spend, this is how what we do in the bathtub. You know, we, we're old people. We don't work. I don't make any money. And I stay at home and I write reviews. What I, what I spend most of my day doing is trying to figure out how can I rationalize my collection because I don't have room for books. I'm tired of seeing them stacked up on the floors. So for when I was young... I bought all these Simonons. I had them all in these cool little um, make uh, Simonon omnibuses. And I got them in these wonderful editions. There's the Venice Train and the Innocents. Really, really cool. The two are the best. This is probably the first book I ever read of Simonon, which was the Venice Train and the Innocents, two of his greatest thrillers. And I collected those. I had just cheap paperbacks. My whole philosophy was just having the books to read. I didn't care if they were collector's items. And then my old buddy, John Clute, when I lived in London, when I first started moving to London, Clute was a big first edition, a bibliophile. Well, not a bibliophile. He liked, collects, he likes, he likes collecting first editions. And he got me sick. I, I got this sickness. And I was going, going around buying first editions. I started to get rid of all of these. I got rid of all these, and I started buying the first editions in, in the English translations. And it was complemented by the fact that the old Hamish Hamilton editions, here's the cap. And the disappearance of Odile. I forget when these. These look like they came out in the 60s, early 60s. I started buying these because they're kind of beautifully, they have cool covers. And they have like lovely, they're lovely set. So you can sort of read one of these in the afternoon. And I uh, started buying these and getting rid of the paperbacks. Well, now in my old fart age, what I'm basically doing is now I'm trying to get the, go back and rebuy these. Where is that one? So I'm going back and rebuying all of these all over again, the um, the uh, omnibuses. Where the hell did I put that one? Anyway, see we see we really put a lot of time into these these shows. Anyway, I, oh here it is. <laughs> I don't have time for the home. I better go to the home. But take my bird with me. Uh, I just got this today. This has the disappearance of Odile in it, and it has the cat. So I'm putting these on. I'm going to sell these. Like these are pretty collector collectibles. I can probably get some good money for these. I hate, you know, I hate getting rid of these beautiful books. This whole episode is about trying to get rid of books. I, I love these books, but I can't keep them all. I just don't have room for the damn things. And the same translations are in this one cool little paperback. And you know, I want to read. I just basically want to spend the rest of my life reading Simonon whenever I can. And that's the new edition to cover those those three volumes. Um, there's the Venice train. So I've been getting rid of all of these old books. I thought I'd show you some of them because they're just so beautiful. I didn't want them to all go without you guys seeing them. Look at this. May Gray in Society. Look at that beautiful cover. It's so hard to get rid of it, but I've got, it's a beautiful book. I have to sell it because I've got the, I've got the, uh, I've got that same volume in the new translation. And these are cool too, but these beautiful old books, it's very hard to. I'm going to have a tough time getting rid of them. Maigret's Memoir is one of my favorite Maigret's. It's a brilliant, clever idea. It's basically the real Maigret. The real Maigret writes his memoirs about watching the fake Maigret books come out. 
it's really really funny and it's it's still a good little thriller um here's one of my all-time favorites look at this beautiful book it, it's kind of heart-wrenching to get rid of it but at the same time i just i have the book in a paperback the little saint this is one of my all-time favorite books and one of my favorite seminars it's about an artist a kind of a you know a, a, a french artist who's who's kind of a simpleton but he's he loves to paint and and may great uh, simon i was a lover of art and he writes this lovely book about a young boy growing up to become a famous artist there's no crime no murders in it at all i love this book i got the first edition so i could have the first edition but then look it's in this nice edition and i have three i got the man with the little dog in there and the little saint and then the may gray in there so i have the exact same book i have to you know again i just have to make some space for all these damn books so i'm gonna i'm gonna hate selling these but i'm gonna do it may gray and the man the boulevard i just mentioned that i'm just showing you how beautiful these are there's the venice train the first thriller i ever read of simonon in the paperback edition and that was the first british hardcover translation of it one of the great thrillers one of his greatest thrillers uh the innocence that's another one i picked up in those collections now here's the really cool ones too look at this i really this this was hard to sell these on the danger line now this is the old rutledge editions look at those cool kind of noise covers isn't that a beautiful cover and then the love this is two again they would put two simonon novels in one hardcover edition and this would have come out in the 50s oh this is 44. this is the war still going on and look at that beautiful copy and what i did was is i just went out i used to have all these in paperback you know and it wasn't, it wasn't that much money but i picked up the the old paperback of the same book i have more room for them you know if i was running a museum i would keep this book just to show people how beautiful the book is but i'm showing you guys this is the last last thing we'll see of these books the premiere look at that incredible cover isn't that a gorgeous book this is a beautiful copy i picked that up in london i used to you know haunt the bookshops on cherry cross road and uh picked up some great stuff and i picked that up in paperback i've got to got to get rid of that so what's the other one i'll show you one more here it is so this is a bit beat up it's called the judge and the hatter this is this covers this is a bit beat up and this would have come out in oh this is translate this has got the translator nigel ryan nigel ryan uh, signed it to somebody i don't know who it all was but it's signed in by nigel ryan the translator it has two two novels the hatter's ghost which is one of simonon's many uh psycho uh again he does a lot of psycho killers a lot of uh, just nutty killers and the Hatter's Fandoms is one of the really good ones. And then there's another one called The Witnesses that I haven't read. So what I just did was is I went out and bought some cheap old beat-up paperbacks. Well, these are these actually like nice covers. Nice nice copies of The Witnesses and The Hatter's Ghost. And I can make some room. Finally, and I'll shut up. One of the great, this is another one of the psycho killers. It's about a guy, I can't remember it too well. It's a great, one of the great seminars. Look at how beautiful that book is. Black Rain. That would have been... That's 1949, just after World War II. Look at this, the, the, the artist on these. I just don't know who it is. I don't think it mentions. I'm sure you can find out. But that beautiful noage cover. And this is a one about a guy. It's very much like a... I wanted, One of these days I want to do a talk. You know, Black... Uh, uh, the L'Etranger, Camus L'Etranger, Ney... Simonov's Black Rain, yay. And this is about a guy who really kills for no reason. And it's about his punishment and how he goes to jail. And uh, Simonov was just so pissed off at that idiot. Camus is a boring novelist. And this book is so much better. Anyway, I'm going to get rid of that too because Penguin did a lovely new translation of Black Rain. It's called The Snow Was Dirty. I don't know if that's a better translation or not. I'm no expert on that stuff. But I'm getting I'm gonna have to get rid of all these lovely old copies. Patience of May Gray. Look at this one. Isn't that a Fritz Lang cut? Is that a Fritz Lang shot of a Fritz Lang movie or not? May Gray Afraid. That's a really good one too. Okay, so I just wanted to let you give you guys a special sneak preview of all these lovely books that I'm gonna get rid of. And uh, and the you know, equal the interiors are as good. These are the wonderful books and they have, they look nice too. But uh, we just can't keep these lovely books anymore. I can't keep two books, two copies of every book. 
I love I love my Simenon. All right, I'm gonna do a few of these because I'm really far behind. I've been reading I've been reading pointlessly for a lot a lot lately, and I, I can't keep up with them. So I got I'll talk a few of these today in the same shirt, same Manhattan. <laughs>